the dead attack. Let's jump on over to um, Necromont. Cool, I have one of those. Got Necromance paired up with Spirit from Titan Quest, just like full Necromancer nonsense. The pets look really dope. Yeah. And it seems like this is a pet build on like Compound V <laughs> yeah. or, or some fucking roids. You know what I mean? Like, like this is like the ultimate pet class out of yeah. the pet classes. You could probably run a pet build with this by itself without a, a second class. For sure. One like really cool thing about it is that there's a few different skills that will sacrifice your own health pool and your own damage to buff your pets. So it's like pure, pure, pure pets. Yeah, well, there is some, um, there's some a caster. little bit of ca caster stuff, not a ton, but I did notice that it had like a lot of attack damage converted to health, some damage absorption. Mm -hmm. It also had an attack damage converted to health aura, so there's some, I guess when enemies get too yeah. close to you, that's kind of good because then you'll be able to life leech. And speaking of life leech, it has life leech resistance reduction as well as taunt resistance reduction as well. Well, that's cool because your skeletons have built-in taunts too that's awesome exactly so that's super cool um you're primarily going to be looking at aether chaos vitality cold and then physical and pierce on your pets the cool thing about the skeleton is that it's the last thing the dark passenger has this sacrifice skill and once you cast the skeleton once it's all full it, you can basically treat it like an active ability because it'll kill one of your skeletons deal a bunch of damage and uh Get all of your minions some health regen. It's really nice. cool. Yeah, it's just a shame that it doesn't work for like uh, like team players. Like I think it's specifically mm -hmm. just for pets, but it's a single player game anyways. When it comes to resistance reduction, the Necromancer is extremely supportive for Aether and Vitality. Um, the Chaos is about half, but it's yeah. got a little bit for everything, and that's mostly for its pets. This one skill, Decay, gives you all of the resistance reduction you'll need for your pets just on one little click. So I'm just gonna put it under Aether Chaos, Vitality, Cold, Physical, and Pierce. The thing about like all of the NCFF classes is that they have like a really strong spammable skill right away. That plus their low level epic sets make them ridiculously smooth leveling builds. The Bone Spear, it starts off as piercing damage, but the right away it has a piercing converted to Aether like right on the next passive. So it's a bit weird like that. I'm kind of curious of, because this is so strong as a pet build, right? Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that you could take Necromant, pair it with the D2 class, and make a viable hybrid. Yeah, because the D2 classes are already insane. You don't really need yeah. much. Uh, yeah, like you don't need much support. If you took like the Sorcerer and paired it with the pet build, I'm pretty sure you could probably pull something insane off. I think the biggest issue is though is those get those builds become extremely squishy because all of their investment mm -hmm. is into their pets. So if something yep. like breaks through your pets and you don't have enough support to mitigate the damage, then you're basically fucked. Yeah, especially with Necromant, like I said, you can sacrifice your max HP just to give your pets a lot more buffs. So it can be really dangerous, but a lot of fun sometimes. All right, so now we can dive into the rest of the Necros. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's appropriate to start with the Necromancer from Grim Dawn, just as a, a base scale. Okay. Um, I have a really good guide on how a Necromancer from the Grim Dawn can make a good melee build with the Terror Knight from Zenith, because oh. it has uh, a couple of nice weapon pull skills here that convert attack damage to health, um, which pairs nicely with all the Terror Knight ones. Um, it also works well as like a caster and it'll obviously work for pets You'll primarily be looking at physical vitality and aether and it does have some poison and cold for pets uh, The other thing I found interesting on like the melee side of it is its resistance reduction is an aura It's a buff for your whole party so you could buff an entire party with your resistance reduction buff. And it also buffs like health and OA and things like that too. That's cool. Yeah, I think so. It also has a, a unique skill called uh, Mark of Torment, which if you're fighting like a boss, it'll give you like 25% damage absorption, as well as reflect some of that damage back that is absorbed, which isn't going to be a lot. But if you're fighting a boss, you know, you're going to be taking bigger hits anyways. There's a ton of support. It actually has a lot of um, resistance reduction for Aether, Vitality, and Physical. 
going over 50. And that's pretty high for just a regular Grim yeah, Dawn class. That is a lot, wow. But yeah, standard Necro pets, attack damage, converted to health, physical, vitality, and aether. Next up, we have Spirit from the Titan Quest yep. class. And uh, I got it. The reason I wanted to start with Grim Dawn ne Necromancer is because I wanted to jump into this one next. Because, like, this class is mostly scaled from those skills. It just puts, like, better modifiers and supportive skills in, in the tree so if you're looking for like a more balanced supportive necromancer that's closest to the grimdon scale then this is the way to go like i said the spirit has some cool pets you have your bone dog with like five different abilities and you have your lich king with like five different abilities it's just kind of crazy titan quest also has a lot of item support for this build so you'll be able to have a complete end game and then with the um, Spirit, I'll put it side by side here so we can see how they uh, pair up. With Spirit, it's pretty similar. You have the same Type A, which you're just going to get one, one of those. You get Cold, Aether, and Vitality Type B. And then it also has Class C of 22%. So you can easily get up over 100% of uh, resistance reduction for both Aether and Vitality. And get quite a bit for physical. That's cool. Yeah, I think so. Finally, we have the D3 Necromancer, which I did um, a Grimcast with somebody from our, our server who did a really cool build with uh, Bone Spear. And they paired it up with the most unlikely combination, which was Wizard. And their build was so strong. Like, they were doing like 3 million damage, wow. and they're basically invincible because of all the attack damage converted to health. And it's just another example of how an unlikely combination can result in like one of the best builds. Yeah, definitely. It's really cool. Um, so, with the Grim Dawn yeah, Necromancer, you know, again, it's going to be like the other ones. Um, supporting Cold, Poison, Vitality, Aether, and also Pierce, which is what the uh, Bone Spear does. So you can make okay. a nice Pierce caster build out, out of this, which is uncommon. It also has some nice flat damage absorption, which is on a, a toggle buff, which also gives you some regen here, which is on the, the Bone Armor, and also some physical resistance, which is also super nice. And yeah, you can basically play it as like a melee build with uh, Grim Scythe. You can play a caster with Bone Spear. You can obviously play pets because it has a ton of pets. It mm -hmm. has Corpse Explosion for a oh, bunch of cool. different skills. Uh, circuit Breaker, which to explain what a Circuit Breaker is, basically once your health drops below a certain percent, um, you basically become immune to damage for so, so many se seconds. So yeah, overall, a great class. There's a ton of item support for it from Grimer, who keeps up with the D3 mod. So yeah, a ton of support for Cold, a ton of support for Aether, Vitality, and then some overall support for everything else. Lastly, we have the D2 Necromancer. I haven't played the Necromancer for either D3 or D2. This Necromancer is primarily based on Aether, Poison, Physical, Fire, Vitality, and Bleed Damage. The pets are cranked up to 11, and it has a nice flat physical damage absorption skill. It also has a really cool skill that is a barrier, which I absolutely love. And you can expect to play this as either pets, caster, or even a melee with the skill Poison Dagger. Let's take a look at the resist reduction. On the D2 Necromancer, we have plenty of elemental, poison, and physical resistance reduction. Especially note the category C that is 80% the physical reduction, which is absolutely insane. As well as another category C, 100% resistance reduction to life leech. And also, 30 to confusion, 85 to life leech, so now you're already at at least 185 to life leech. So overall, a really great class. It's probably one of the most overpowered that I've seen. Um, so yeah. Is there anything else that you want to talk about as far as like the Grim Dawn mod? Or? Yeah, it's a fun mod. It's really nice to put all these different classes together. And it's going to be really nice to have this chart for people. Yeah, well, hopefully it helps a lot of people out in the randomizer challenges. 
So this concludes the mastery overview. So I would like to thank everyone who helped out on stream, those who came to hang out, and of course the modders who developed the extra content for us. I'll probably add more to this overview series as I get my thoughts together, but until then, stay excellent.